Hello and welcome to another Final Cut Pro 10 tutorial. Sorry I've been absent for a while, I've just been in the process of moving to a flat in Norwich, uh, but now I am back up and running, so remember to request your tutorials in the uh, comments below. Um, and please do share these videos as well if you find them useful. Um, also, if you consider donating, that would be extremely helpful and it helps support me to continue what I do, because at the moment this is very much obviously a part-time thing um, in the balance mm. with my filmmaking. Okay, so let's just take a look at this project we have here. This is my uh, showreel that I've been working on uh, that some of you guys didn't like. And what we're going to do is send this timeline to Adobe Premiere Pro. Now, why would we want to do that? Well, let's just think. If you're an editor and you think you're very efficient inside of Final Cut Pro 10, however, you're uh, finishers and your conformers like to work in Adobe and also uh, from Adobe you can output it obviously to uh, audition sound mixers, uh, after effects, visual effects people um, and it's just got a lot of options going for it in terms of um, export and XML if that's the way your production's going. Anyway, I as a visual effects editor as well as an editor, um, although very basic visual effects, like to edit some of my stuff inside of Final Cut Pro 10 because I think it's a very fast and efficient editor, send my t uh, timeline to Adobe uh, Premiere Pro and then I can work on the visual effects having already conform uh, sorted out my timeline, my sound effects and basic sound effects that is. Um, so today we're just going to take a look how to send that uh, and some of the problems you might face. So if we just quickly look at this timeline you can see we've got some got some basic visual effects, uh, sorry, some basic sound effects down here uh, scattered around. We've got a soundtrack as our main timeline and then we've got loads of clips with some crossfades. You can see we've also got some titles here. You can see these titles are disabled. Um, you can disable it by pressing V. You can re-enable it by pressing V uh, just to toggle it on and off. And you can see this is in its own little storyline, a, a secondary storyline. Then we've got some more clips and then it fades out obviously for the end and then there's another fancy title. Now, do not expect wonders from this is all I'm going to say. Because the Final Cut Pro 10 XML is still in very much its early stages, there isn't a great translation of titles yet. In fact, for the most part there isn't translation at all. Uh, the moment you start introducing additional stuff, it's going to really start to struggle. Also, uh, the clips in this timeline are mixed format. Now, generally this isn't a problem, but when I say mixed format, what I mean is some of the clips are 720p, some are 1080, some are even lower, uh, because it's a montage of videos I've made uh, over the past few years. So obviously formats do change, and the formats that these were shot on obviously changed and progressed, hopefully better. Um, you can be the judge of that, I guess. So. What we're going to do to send this over to Premiere Pro is we're going to have to go back to the uh, project menu, the project library, and then with this um, type, this showreel selected, we're going to go File, Export XML, and then we've got a folder here on the desktop. We're just going to call it that. We're going to call it version 2 so we don't get it confused with the earlier version. And very simply, that's save the XML. Now, the problem is, no one supports the Final Cut Pro 10 XML, so what you're going to need is a program called X to 7. Now this is available on the Mac App Store, so if you go onto the Mac App Store and search X to 7, it's there. Now you might be wondering, like, where is it? Um, basically, you can see X to 7 is running because it's up here in the menu bar. We can go File Open, and we can choose this XML version 2 that we just saved. Choose Open. And then it's going to say, do we want to export video and audio tracks? The answer to that is obviously yes. And then we're going to save it within the same folder. You might want to be a bit more specific and uh, put it into some subfolders. And very simply, again, it has now converted the format. If we now go into Premiere Pro, you can see that we've got a blank project here with no, mm -hmm. we've got a very basic uh, default sequence. Uh, this is a 1080p project. However, when you import XML, it comes with its own sequence. We're going to go into File, Import, and in that same folder again, you can see here is our version 2 XML. 
uh, you can see that the Final Cut Pro 10x amount is greyed out and that's because Premiere doesn't support it. X to 7, what that does is turn your Final Cut Pro 10x amount into Final Cut Pro 7x amount, which is supported by Premiere Pro. We can import this. It's saying there's going to be some issues. We sort of know that. That's why it's very important to make sure that what you do is don't do too many effects, adjustments, titles in your editor. Do them in the final application you're going to work in. So if we double click in this folder that it's given us, you can see this is all the media. You can see it's not organized into subfolders. It's very much just everything thrown in. So going back and making changes is going to be hard because you've just lost all the organization features uh, that you are making the most of inside of Final Cut Pro 10. Now let's go back into Premiere Pro. You can see that in here is also our timeline. Here you go, Dan Allen Show Real 2010, 2012. Sorry. You can see that it has actually remembered what was uh, disabled. If we zoom in here by pressing the plus or sorry the equals key, you can see that this is greyed out. Now if we right click here and press enable that technically has re-enabled the clip. However, it was a Final Cut Pro 10 title. Adobe's not going to like that. And you can see it, it doesn't even try. this. And if you load this up into the source view, you can see that there is. it just doesn't read anything here. There is no title here. The titles do not translate. I'm not entirely sure whether it's possible to try and translate them. Uh, if you had the like the most basic of titles, I'm not sure. Now, here's what I was talking about with the uh, mixed format. You can see that clips like this, obviously, do not are not scaled to the whole size like they are automatically inside of Final Cut Pro 10. Now, it depends on your uh, settings, but if we were to select all the clips, by just highlighting them all, we should be able to scale to frame size, and you can see very quickly we've. Uh, corrected that problem and now as we scroll through everything is in order. It's also remembered our keyframe adjustments that we made inside of Final Cut Pro 10. So if we jump back over into this you can see that there's a very slight crossfade. This was using the crossfade tool which is built into Final Cut Pro 10 and that has actually been translated as keyframe adjustments inside of Adobe Premiere Pro. Now, one of the problems that I have found is that obviously you can see here that it doesn't have support for stereo tracks. What it does do is split uh, stereo left and right into two different tracks, and these two tracks are mono, as opposed to having one track with both channels built in. Now, the other problem I've also found is that this XML translation hates, with a capital H, hates 5.1 surround sound. All manner of things go wrong if you were trying to translate 5.1 surround sound with mixed sound formats, different stereo and mono tracks, all keyed in to come out of different speakers. If you try and translate that across programs, you're going to struggle. Um, I'll have to leave it up to you to uh, experiment and try and work out if you can come up with a workaround, but you get things like no sound coming out at all because the tracks have been, the individual tracks have been inverted and then are mapped out, but then not that right part is mapped out. It's hard to explain, but have a go yourself. Anyway, hopefully this was useful. I'm sorry that there's no way to do it without the third party X to 7 tool, but X to 7 tool is really good. Um, if you have, if you're working on an edit in Scarlet of Final Cut Pro 10 and you have a production house that requires it in Final Cut Pro 7 format, then it's obviously very useful in that respect. Uh, also, for people that like to finish in After Effects and Premiere Pro, like myself, it's also very useful. Just heed my warning, be careful what you're trying to translate. Don't do too much work in Final Cut Pro 10 on effects, titles, and whatnot. You use them as placeholders, because remember, you can always say, select this click, uh, clip and replace it with an After Effects composition. And then you can obviously create a more, much more fancy title in After Effects and it will keep the duration of that clip. So hopefully this was useful. Like I said, you've got all the crossfades. Um, 
as we're in Final Cut Pro. Oh, look at that. I got a message. Good old mountain lion. Maybe in future I'll uh, remember to turn them off when I'm recording a tutorial. But hey, uh, thanks for watching. Thanks for subscribing and request your tutorials in the dialogue below. Thank you.